So I'm here today with Bill Meek. How are you doing, Bill? Fine, thank you. Uh, Bill's another model railroader from uh, Ottawa and I've been trying to get to his layout for years. Bill and I uh, go back a long ways. We were in high school together. And Tell me a little bit about uh, your interest in trains, Bill. Uh, how far back did it go? Well, actually, <clears throat> it goes back quite a ways because um, my grandparents on my mother's side had a farm up on top of the ridge overlooking Dalhousie Station. Mm -hmm. And I always spent the summers there, and that was when, in the 60s, when steam was still running through on the CP line. So I remember hearing, you know, my father and my grandfather say, you know, those steam whistles, if they ever disappear, which they were disappearing at the time, they were really upset because diesel isn't steam. And I guess that's where my sort of interest as a kid Mm -hmm. growing up was in trains and uh, when it came to building a layout in the 90s everyone asked well you got to pick an area where you want to model and I go okay fine and I said well I mentioned this story of where I spent my childhood on the farm during the summers and uh, they said oh do you know where Glenn Robertson is and I said yeah, I spent time with my grandfather because he was also a jack of all trades. He was a tinsmith mm -hmm. and he did a lot of roofing. And uh, <laughs> I remember going up to Glen Robertson and playing around there. And they said, well, you've got an excellent train operation there where they actually have two trains meet and switch their their respective loads. Yes. And one went up into Hawkesbury and the other one went back to uh, Montreal through Coteau Junction. I said, oh, I didn't even know that. When you're growing up, you don't necessarily look for, you don't rail fan. Mm -hmm. which we but do to now. situate the appreciation, all of this area that you're talking about is in uh, eastern Ontario, northeastern Ontario? eastern Ontario, and it's not far from Ottawa. No, okay. So, so to go rail fanning and figure out what we're going to model or do, mm -hmm. took lots of photographs and whatnot, but we're only an hour away yeah. from what I was modeling. So before you started the railroad, you went out with your camera and a couple of buddies and did some rail fanning of the actual trackage in towns and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, now uh, there are some interesting industries because of, what's the name of your railroad? It's, uh, it was formerly known as a short line, the Lorignal Railway. Right. It was owned by Railtex. Mm -hmm. Now they are now a fallen flag. Yeah. And so I model at the time when Ottawa Central which again is also mm -hmm. no longer with us, they actually had the trackage from Glen Robertson up to Hawkesbury right. as well as into Ottawa. So since I don't have engines at the present time for the Lorignel Railway, mm -hmm. uh, which would be nice, but they're still in a box yes. waiting for skills to be improved such that I can actually build locomotives. Mm -hmm. So I went with the Ottawa Central out of the box. Yep. Uh, doing the Glen Robertson to Hawkesbury run. Mm -hmm. And I guess along that trackage as well, you would see some Canadian National Railway and Via Rail and a few other things. That's right. Canadian National is what brought, brought stuff up to Glen Robertson to do mm -hmm. the, the switchover. Uh, in fact, CN actually owned the tra the short line railway from Glen Robertson up to Hawkesbury. Yeah. But there was a flurry of sales, I believe, in the late 80s, early 90s, and that's where Railtech came to be in the Lorignel Railway, Yes, which is named after a village just west of uh, Hawkesbury called Lorignel. Yeah, I guess my interest in model railroading began around 98. Uh, that's when I had a lot of help at that time because I didn't have the skills I needed. And uh, so since 98 we built the, uh, the actual layout itself, building the uh, underlying structure that the, with that, the, tr the track and uh, scenery mm -hmm. would then rest on. So when you say we, is that the royal we, or did you have no, some help I with friends? Had, we had a we had something we called the Friday Night Group, yes. and the some of the original members, Trevor Marshall, who's now in Toronto, yeah. uh, Marty Phillips, who's now out in BC and mm -hmm. British Columbia on the island, and uh, of course Mike Hamer. 
Oh yeah, well, that famous <laughs> model railroader Mike Hamer. His name pops up, I, eh? I he only lives around the corner from he you, does. too. Right? And in fact, he was the guy who inspired me to actually. He said to me, "I was building a four by eight layout, which most of us do, and that was back in the late '90s." And he said, "Do you really want to walk around your trains? Wouldn't you like to have the trains run around you?" Uh huh. And that's when we came up with uh, the track plan that you see here with yeah. some help from Trevor Marshall. And uh, we never looked back. It's uh, been 20 years of doing and learning and then doing some more and then watching other people do and then doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's, a, it's something that you should take slowly. And I'm glad I took 20 years to get where I am today. What's the size of the railroad room, Rafi? Oh, roughly 20 by 14. So, yeah, we did a quick flip there. We're now in staging. What, a, what area of the world does this represent as staging? This is uh, Cotto Junction. Okay. Just uh, west of Montreal. And that's where it joins the CN Main Line, I guess. Is, that's right. And they the have CN, an interchange there. The CN Main Line runs through here, yeah. and it's where all the cars are uh, staged yeah. and brought together to go up to... Glenn Robertson to do that infamous switch. Now, <coughs> do people make up their own trains here, or do uh, do you have an operator in here to an build operator them? in here will actually yeah. make up trains. Okay, so you have three tracks of potential cars for your train, and the rolling stock is it more is mostly typical of what did run on the line. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have an arrival and departure track with a runaround, so when trains come in and out you can move the locomotives Absolutely. around? Absolutely, yes. Can you reverse them or do you have to sort of um, or do the 050 with no, the locomotives? No, you can actually, with the runaround, you can actually reverse the, the whole thing. Yeah, when the, they the come in, uh, everything is uh, switched out Yeah. and there's enough engines in the yard here that we can do that, take cars off the train coming in. Yeah. Um, then it runs around a return loop to reset itself so it's going back in towards Glen Robertson. Yes. And then we start outfitting it with cars to go out to Glen Robertson. Well, this isn't the most scenic part of the railroad with the furnace and everything, but it's an awesome use of space, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta like it. Yeah. And it really does serve a really good purpose when it comes to operating the railroad. At one point we were going to use surround staging, which is where the track that stages is behind the scenery. Yeah, like at Mike Hamer's layout, right? Yeah, yeah. and I just didn't have enough room. We were yeah. using uh, step ladders to try to get over the scenery to, to switch out trains. Sure. It didn't work when I looked at the furnace room and said, why don't we just extend it through the wall? Yeah. And that's exactly what we But found. you do have some elements of that in the other room in terms yes, of... Do. Let's go have a look at that. Okay. So you come out of the furnace room staging area and you come into what was referred to in the original layout as surround staging. Right, so it's in behind the scenic block. Absolutely. Yeah, and and that Y that comes out there, is that allows you to reverse your trains on the actual layout when you uh, want to turn them? Yes and no, but it yeah. also allows you to have a loop yes. on the layout so that if you have people that you're entertaining that just came in to look at the the trains running, uh, yeah. we can now have the trains running while you have a conversation because... Uh, yes. And they just continue around the loop on that particular Y that you're... Yeah. Filming. Okay. Nice. And then it comes into what town then when after we've left Cotto Junction? What's the... Uh, okay, the trains arrive on the bridge. Over here, so it goes around that uh, piece in the back and coming in through the gap there. Yeah. Yep. And it then arrives in Glen Robertson, uh, where you see the baseball diamond that is a a feature of Glen Robertson right along the tracks. As yeah. The tracks exist here. So uh, the elements that you have in here are actually in in the town photos that yes, you've seen. Yes. Some of them, and mm -hmm. uh, the white framed house, which is framing over top of a log house. With yes. a nice gable roof. Uh, that's an original structure that you'll find in Glen Robertson. Did you scratch build site. that? Yes. Wow. That's quite nice. What sort of techniques did you use to, to build it? Trial and error. Yeah. Lots of trial and error. Yeah, so you just went and looked at the photos and looked at the sides and drew sketched stuff up and started cutting? Yeah. What uh, material is it made of? Uh, they're inside, it's um, sheet. Uh, 
wood sheets, yeah. uh, and then a clapboard siding put over top. And that's wood? That's all wood. Yeah. And the roof is paper. Okay. And some paper shingles. Well, that's obviously uh, something to be very proud of, to be able to look and find a, a house that you can actually see in the town and then build it like that. Great modeling skills. And I had a little green garage outside. I bet you there is a green garage there outside. There is. <laughs> We'll have a look at it from the other side later. Uh, you also have, I see over here, a greenish colored home. That looks like a kit. It is a kit, and it's very typical of the houses that you'll find mm -hmm. in the Glen Robertson area, and even in Hawkesbury. Very few brick structures. Almost yeah. things are frame, frame and uh, wood siding. Uh, I noticed that uh, you also have a, a very in, a typically Ontario style bridge. Yes. That um, that's the way they basically got over. Rather than having level crossings, they went over top of the tracks most of the time, and they built these these structures. A nice little scenic effect back there. It looks like uh, if you get the right angle, there's uh, vehicles that could end up. Uh, driving away from each other. There's a mirror back there. That's quite a clever use of uh, of space to generate uh, more distance on your bridge. It makes it look uh, twice as long. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a barn here? Yes, yeah. uh, that's an area that I started uh, putting the kit together. Yes. And which is an Alder Models and uh, which unfortunately no longer exists. Yeah. Uh, but now I want to take that and uh, make it into an incorporated scene. The, it's it's the nature of model railroading, eh? If you see it, buy it because uh, the companies just basically disappear after a while because they're all cottage industry type businesses. Absolutely. I see that there's an Alder station underway over there too. That's very similar to the one that uh, I had that uh, Mike Hamer put together for me. He must did he build that one for you as well? Yes, he did. Yeah. Uh, ten years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's there, though. It is there, and yeah. uh, look forward to scenicing it. And yeah. uh, now, the colors of it is that based on an actual photo that you have? Yeah, the, the actual station that was in Glen Robertson was a single-story structure. Yeah. According to the pictures, it had that coloring. Okay, so it was sort of a greenish uh, part, and then a, a gray, a gray on, the on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the doors, I know that they had a stage there where they had red doors for passengers and blue doors for freight, but I see you have a brown door, but that must have been based on what they had on the photo. Yeah, uh, because this was uh, Canadian National, and if you go north towards Hawkesbury, there actually was, running east and west, a Canadian Northern Line. Ah, uh, okay. Which yeah. is long since gone. Yeah. Now I see you've uh, made your own trees to a large extent yes. using sedum, I guess. Is that yeah, the product? Using natural materials yeah. rather than... Uh, Is that the old dip and spin and using the ground phone? Absolutely. <laughs> works well, eh? Really it beautiful. It works well and it's fast and you can make lots and lots of trees with uh, very little difficulty. Mm -hmm. And your streams are that... Uh, I know that uh, personally, just because we know each other, that you have this thing for canoe resin. Is that canoe resin? It is. Uh, all <laughs> the water on the layout is canoe resin and... Uh, well, you're into canoes, so you I'm have in, lots of resin. I have lots of it, so I, I make use of it. Yeah, it makes for a very interesting brown uh, color. Uh, and, and that's all dependent effective. on what you put... you paint your river yeah, bottom, bottom with. It's sure. reflecting that to a great extent. Yeah. And over here I see you have another alder barn, because I, I know that. I, I built this. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get part of it from you, and you wouldn't let it go <laughs> at the time. But it's nice to see that you have it built. That's really nice. Yeah. Any unique aspects of modifications? Uh, not that particular one, but yeah. the farmhouse, however, is a definite. That's a gem, uh, right? That is uh, two Sylvan kits. Yes. Resin. Yeah. And uh, I love working in resin at the time because of the details you could get from it. Mm -hmm. And most this is actually modeling a house that's not too far from the 417 overpass. That's also on the layout, but I wanted a back country kitchen. Yes. So I ended up taking two Sylvan houses and bringing them together in a in a kit bashing sense. Yeah. 
And lo and behold, six months later, doesn't Claire come out with a backcountry kitchen as part of his Sylvan line? Or he must have seen your models. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Claire has some wonderful stuff. I really like your television antenna. It really uh, sets the era. Let's harken back to the days when Trevor Marshall was uh, yeah. assisting and he had this and he said, Bill, you got to put that on your layout. Yeah, well, it looks awesome. Yeah. And then you have an overpass and that probably represents a, an actual overpass. Yep. Uh, this is the overpass that went over the Laurinell Railway line yeah. that goes up to Hawkesbury. What what highway would that be then? Is that the main freeway between Ottawa and Montreal? In Montreal, Highway 417. Oh, and you even have a sign that says Alexandria a certain distance and Ottawa a certain distance. Eh? Yeah. Okay, so when you're looking here, you're looking west. Exactly. Yeah. And then I see you have another very Ontario-like uh, structure here, which is working in stone. Yeah, Limestone, a, eh? It's a hydrocal kit. Yeah. And of course, because it's white when it comes out of the box, it can be made to look very much like a limestone house, which is very akin to the area. Yeah, it is for sure, yeah. And you consider that the Rideau Canal was built by Scott stonemasons. Yes. And uh, they would then build their homes in the 1800s with the same material. Everybody's wondering what to do with the old foursome tractor there in the backyard, eh? <laughs> That's a Jordan kit, and I yeah. had a great deal of fun putting those together. Yeah, I, you are one of the very few people that smile about Jordans, <laughs> and I'm glad that you do. Well, maybe not smiling when I'm doing it, but when it's done... <laughs> You're proud. <laughs> I love the uh, stonework at the bridge, too. Is that plaster bits? Those are plaster bits, and I uh, just keep breaking them until I get the, the size and nature of what, I'm, what I wanted. And yeah. you'll notice that the cut through that is also made with hydrocal and yeah. plaster and uh, most of those stone chips were the carving yeah. the stone cut. So you uh, uh, carved and stained all your uh, rock there? Yes. Very, very nice. Yeah, let's go and have a look at the other side of the layout because there's some really interesting features that you won't see anywhere else.